Prego, Buongiorno, amico. ciao. ciao. Eh, Sono un normale. Sì, natura. Eh, sì, cornetta con Nutella? Sì, oh, sì. sì. Fantastico. Uno a uno? Uno a uno, grazie. Okay. Okay. I get it. Ok? Sì, è so okay. fantastico. 2,60. Ok, va bene. Ok, okay. Va grazie. Bene. Grazie ciao, mille. Ciao, ciao. E questo è come sai che sei in Italia. They have a guy who drives around fresh baked bread and croissants to your campsite every morning. I love it. It's, it's fantastic. One normal, one with Nutella, fresh cup of coffee. So I realized I haven't even given you a tour of the cockpit yet. Big bench seat with a back. This is because it's basically just a Vespa. Once you're in here, you've got your foot brake there. So foot brake, emergency brake, and then you've got your um, blinkers here. You've got your high beam and low beam, which is quite great. You've got your horn, obviously your throttle, and then you have gears, so clutch, and then you have first, second, third, and fourth. Um, I never use first unless I'm going up some really steep hill, but that's that, and then you can put this, goes down, and then you actually have reverse, just one gear. It's very much just for turning around. You have a, technically, you have a little speedometer. Um, but it definitely doesn't work and the miles or, or kilometers are way off. Uh, you have ignition, you have your little windshield wiper, and this is kind of what I look at when I'm driving. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a pretty cool, it's small, and it's not the comfiest seat. My back is definitely a little tired at the end of each day, and my hands actually get quite tired because you have to really 
really grip it, uh, the throttle as well as the clutch, especially with all the switches. And the clutch is pretty stiff. I think that's just so that, I'm not sure if it's so that they basically, you never like slip a gear, um, or if it's just that it's an old clutch and it needs to be replaced. That could very well be the case. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool in here. It's it's a, it's super loud. There's absolutely, I mean, this is pretty thin. Uh, and it's just, as you can hear, pretty noisy. I do have a little light up here that's uh, pretty dim. Obviously, I can see out the back, which is actually almost easier than my little mirrors. I can see them, but I have to kind of look and duck, and so I actually find it easier to almost just look like that. Yeah, the funny thing is, obviously, this this doesn't have AC, it doesn't have heat, or it doesn't have, it doesn't have anything, and so these windows work quite great, these little wing windows so that's all I have these don't go down at all but these come in and then you pretty much just get blasted with with air most cars they like tell you what the temperature is inside and how you want to adjust your like climate control as well as it'll tell you the temperature outside well my solution to that is I got this little thermometer at a second hand shop so I get to just look down and see it's uh it's almost, it is 30 degrees in here. And uh, I don't know the temperature outside, but I would guess it's maybe a little bit cooler than that. <laughs> That's my way of telling <laughs> the weather is uh, my little makeshift temperature gauge. left um, Lakata and got passed through Jella and down to um, basically yesterday was was like I said it was yesterday was no man's land and as soon as we got through that I kind of knew that we were basically just I mean every couple miles there's a beautiful spot to stop and that's Sicily right I got to get some gas because I've only got basically three liters in the tank because um, I actually just ran out at the, where I just had coffee. Luckily, I always have my, my little tank and I have to have that because it's a two stroke engine. It's about 190 cc's. And so it's a two stroke, so you have to mix oil with gas, which means every time I have to put the gas in, measure how much oil, then put it in the tank and then repeat. So the nice thing is I always end up having a spare five liters, but five liters is like a little over a gallon is all. Sicily. It's interesting the way that all the water can come in through here. Uh, it feels like Belize or the Florida Keys. 
We're about uh, 10 miles away from Puerto Palo, that south, most southeastern tip. So, what was that? Palape. No. Oh. Cool. Uh, for those of you keeping score, I did just get a nice positive old guy wave in another Ave. So, we've entered some good territory around here. It's definitely very rural again. I've seen a couple Apes that are more working Apes. Obviously, this one's a little, he's a bit retired. <laughs> he's like, yeah, right. He's a bit retired, except for this trip. One of the coolest things about this trip is how much it reflects Sicilian lifestyle and, and, and what the culture is like here. It does a great job of, I think, painting the picture of, of what it's like to live here and be immersed in this culture. People are so lovely and, and the lifestyle is to take its time. They say often piano piano and, and it's such a lovely thing where you're not in a rush to go everywhere. You're not in a rush to work and do the next thing and like work. You work to live but you don't live to work. The southernmost tip of Sicily is where we find historically important Porto Palo di Capo Passero in the province of Siracusa. Known for its historical significance, it is a location of the liberation of Italy from the German occupation in World War II. The island of Capo Passero is located on the eastern shore of the town and it features an abandoned Tonara tuna factory from the 13th century and the Forte di Capo Passero built in 1583 by the Viceroy of Sicily. You know, for a $20 tent, this thing has been an absolute beast, so I can't complain. It's not the prettiest thing I've ever seen with this weird metallic gray ring cover, but 20 bucks. What a ridiculous trip this is. <laughs> it's really fun though. Three was great. Day three, we covered a lot of ground. I feel like we did exactly what I wanted to do in day three. Uh, it's getting more difficult because we're not on the open road and I'm just having, I'm just trying to figure out how to film everything and, and also filming the interactions. I think that's one of the harder parts of this is, you know, you put a camera in anybody's face and they just naturally shut down or those those organic moments don't happen. As well as language barriers and stuff, which isn't an excuse and I, and I don't mind the language barrier. I love talking my terrible Italian. So basically it's just learning each day. It's learning um, how to be more efficient and proficient um, with what I'm doing and what I'm filming and, and just all of it. So Hopefully you guys are enjoying it. I'm in really enjoying the trip. I'm really enjoying this whole journey. And uh, yeah, I'm just piano, piano. I'm just taking it slow and, and enjoying the ride and just kind of letting it come to me as it does and see what happens. So 
tomorrow is going to be an early start. We're going to go into Martzememi. I'm going to try to get there early, um, definitely before 8, and have coffee. I've never been there. I don't know what to expect besides the fact that it's supposed to be a very picturesque little kind of fishing village. And then we're going to head into Noto and uh, see what this flower festival is all about.